Today, I'm gonna show you how to stylize a magazine cover in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And guys, today's episode is gonna be so cool. I came to the studio earlier and I saw this uh, Fast Company magazine and I was like, it would be so cool to recreate this magazine cover with Flurn style, of course. So we're gonna show you how to do it, including the color gradient that you can see on Gwyneth Paltrow's face. We're gonna start today's episode off by bringing in an image from photolia.com and showing you how to give that really nice, unique color gradient going from green to magenta. Then we're gonna bring in the Flurn logo and show you how to mask out the area for your subject, making it look like the type is behind your subject's head. After that, we're gonna bring in some type and show you how to use the alignment tools in Photoshop to make designing a magazine cover much easier. Cool, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So we're starting off with our image from photolia.com and what I first wanna do is give it that really nice color. We're gonna get some greens on the top and magentas down on the bottom. Now there are a million ways to color an image and this is the easiest way I figured for this particular effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my adjustment layers and we're gonna go down to gradient. There we go. And this is gonna fill the entire image with a gradient. Now my choice is what do I want this gradient to look like? Right now it's my foreground color to transparent and it's white. So you can see white's my foreground color and it's going from white to transparent. So that's what we see here, white to transparent. So let's go ahead and click on this gradient here because I want to change this a little bit. So we're going to click on any one of these. Let's just try this guy to start with. We'll hit okay there and then we'll hit okay. All right, this looks pretty decent. It's not the colors we want, but at least we have a gradient over top of our image. All right, so I've created the gradient and now I actually want it to color the portrait. And to do that, we're gonna use blend modes. Now, it can be difficult to know which blend mode is gonna look the best. So I'm gonna show you a keyboard shortcut that you can use to flip through the blending modes of a layer. All right, here's all you have to do. First thing you wanna do is hit V for your move tool, or you can just click on your move tool right over here. It's important you're on your move tool because that will change the layer blend mode of the layer instead of the tool. So V first. Then you wanna hold down the shift key and hit the plus and minus on your keyboard. So as I'm hitting the plus button, you can see my layer is actually flipping through different blend modes. And this gives me a really good idea of what's actually going on in my image. So you can see all these different blend modes are giving me different effects here. So it's really up to you as to define what effect you actually want. Now for this, I already know that I want my blending mode to be screen. What that's gonna do is it's going to lighten up my dark areas, but it's not gonna affect my light areas. So let's just turn this off and on, and there we can see. That's our screen blending mode with the gradient. Now that's really cool. Let's say I want this to change what colors are actually on my image. So I'm gonna click right here on my gradient. There we go, we've got our gradient. It's a linear gradient. You can play around with radial gradients or angle gradients, whatever you want. We're gonna stick with linear for now. Now, let's go ahead and change our colors. So I'm gonna click on our gradient, and to change our colors, we're just gonna click on this little square down here, and it brings it up as active, and now I can choose my colors. So this is the bottom color here. This is the purple color on the bottom. We're gonna click here, and I'm gonna give it like a nice magenta. There we go. Now you notice that the lighter I go with this color, the more it's going to affect my image, and that has to do with the blending mode of my layer. So as I go a little bit darker, you can see it's not affecting nearly as much. Down near black, it's gonna do pretty much nothing. There we go, let's go a little bit more towards magenta, and that looks pretty good. Let's hit okay there. Now it's time to change our top color. So we're gonna click on this orange color here, click here where it says color, and now we're gonna change this to a really nice green. There we go, go a little bit darker to lessen the effect, and hit okay there. So you can see you have a ton of options here and you can make any gradient you'd like color your image. All right, let's give this a little bit more red. I want to go a little bit more red with this. There we go, that looks good. And I can see the preview live. So we're gonna hit okay. Now if you want to reverse this, you can click there and it's going to reverse the direction from top to bottom. If you wanna change your angle, you can do that too. If you wanna go from left to the right or right to the left, you can do that as well. In this case, we're gonna stick with what we started with. So let's hit okay, and there we go. So a really quick and easy way to add some nice coloring to an image. 
All right, guys, now it's time to add a title to the magazine cover. So we're gonna bring in our Florin logo and mask it out so it looks like it's behind our subject's head. So here in another document, I've got the Florin logo. We're gonna use the Move tool, and we'll hold down the Shift key and click and drag from one image to another. And there we can see the Florin logo is now on our magazine cover. So let's hit Command T to go ahead and transform it. Hold down the Shift key and the Option key to make this a little bit smaller. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this right up to the top of our image and use my up arrows to just nudge it into place. There we go. Now that looks really good. First thing I wanna do is figure out how are we going to make it look like the type is actually behind your head. Well, it's actually a lot easier than you think. I'm gonna create a layer mask on this layer by clicking on our layer mask button right here. And then we're gonna paint with our black paintbrush. So black on a layer mask makes a layer invisible. So painting with black on my layer mask, oh, had a weird brush going on there. Let's go ahead and choose a normal brush. We're just gonna paint black right over here and I'm able to go right behind our subject's head. There we go. Now, if you make any mistakes, it's no big deal. Just switch your brush from black to white and you can start painting. Let's say I wanted to paint it back. You can paint it back, no problem, just by painting with white. All right, now here in the R, it's getting a little bit tricky because there's some like kind of some faint hairs here that I want to actually appear above my R. So here's a cool trick. Let's go ahead and make these two layers invisible, okay? Now on a new layer, I'm gonna go to select color range because I wanna select this hair. I wanna select the hair and then use it as a layer mask here with the type. So we'll go to select and then down here to color range. All right, now super easy. All I have to do is click on my image where I want to select, right? So I'm gonna click here, right here in the hair. There we go, somewhere where it's gonna select the hair, but not really the background. And we'll bring our fuzziness down. Ideally, you want your hair to be light and you want your background to be dark. Whatever's light gets selected, whatever's dark does not get selected. So let's hit okay there, and that area becomes selected. All right, so we saw the hair is selected. Here on the layer mask, I'm gonna paint black on this exact same layer mask. I don't have to change layer masks. I'm just gonna paint black and it's going to make it invisible where the hair is. All right, if you ever find that you can't see through, like you can see right now, I can't really see exactly what this looks like because I've got all these little dots everywhere. That's my selection, okay? You can hit Command H to hide your selection. So Command H is gonna hide your selection. It's gonna ask you if you wanna hide Photoshop or extras. We're gonna go to extras. There we go, and we're just gonna hide that selection. So there you can see that the hair from our image now is part of my layer mask. This is what the layer mask looks like now for my Florin logo. There we go. And it looks like the Florin logo is actually behind her head, which is exactly what we want. All right, guys, so we've brought our image in, we've colored it, and we've added our title. Now, I went ahead and created a bunch of type for this magazine. We're gonna bring everything together, and I'm gonna show you how to use the alignment tools to design this in a really easy way. So here are all the layers I went ahead and made already in Photoshop. So I'm gonna use my move tool to just drag them right in to our image. There we go, and we're gonna hit full screen. So let's go through these layers here. Now, this fine art issue, let's go ahead and bring up a couple of windows that are gonna help us with our type. We're gonna to go to window, and then I'm gonna go down to character. Now, here in character, you're gonna see character is most often linked with paragraph and we're gonna show you how those work. So if you don't see either of them, just go to window and then you can click on paragraph and it'll bring up paragraph. Okay, now here in your paragraph view, this is where you can align your text to the left, to the center, or to the right. All right, in this case, we are going to align this to the right. Now, here in our character, this is where we can adjust our size. You can see as I bring my size up or down, more or less is going to be included. I can change the weight of the text as well. Now, a lot of the time, if you're working with a font like Helvetica New, you're gonna have a lot of different options here. Helvetica New, you can choose light, you can choose regular, you can choose all the way down here to bold. So this is a really great tip for creating things like magazine covers because oftentimes you're gonna have different weights of type in the same cover. So we're gonna stick with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it be bold and we're gonna have that be all the way with our paragraph. We're gonna be aligned right and I can choose the uh, distance in between each of my letters. So if I choose zero, you can see we've got a lot of distance between my letters now. 
50 even more, 100 even more, and down to like negative 50, we can see everything is nice and close together. So that's where I want it for now. We're gonna go ahead and bring this right down there. Okay, next we have create a magazine cover in Photoshop. And you can see this is actually the same exact font here. We've just cho chosen a different weight. So you can see here's the bold, okay? And then back to light, which is what we wanna use. Now for this one, I'm gonna click on paragraph and we're gonna align that to the right as well. And now I wanna find an easy way. This guy, basically this where it says create a magazine cover in Photoshop and the fine art issue, I want them both to be aligned to the right side and I want them to be perfectly aligned with each other. And that's where our alignment tools come in handy. All right, so your alignment tools in Photoshop are nested with the move tool. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on our move tool. There we go. Now these guys up here at the top, these are our alignment tools. Now you can see they're grayed out right now because I only have one layer selected. If I hold down the command key and I click on two different layers, now I'm able to use my alignment tools. So if I wanted to align these to the left, I can click on the align to the left. If I want to align to the right, I can do that. We can go with center line, we can do bottom, middle, or top. Okay, so really anything you want. Now let's just go ahead and undo that a couple times. This is where I want, and I want everything to be aligned to the right. So you can see the creative magazine cover in Photoshop is perfectly aligned with the fine art issue. All right. Now, <laughs> the issue here is I can't even see where it says create a magazine cover in Photoshop. I can't see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer underneath and I'm gonna grab my marquee tool and we're just gonna create a little box here. Now, I'm actually just gonna create it right here. It doesn't matter where you create it. Okay, now that we have this box, I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and we're gonna fill this with a color. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and choose our color. There we go, a nice green. All right, we're gonna deselect that and bring this down. Now, in this case, I wanna be able to see my Creative Magazine cover in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and align this to the left of my issue. So we're gonna bring it over, command click where it says Fine Art Issue, and I'm gonna align those to the left. There we go. And that's gonna put this little square right to the left of my type. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and use our Move tool and bring this straight down. All right, very nice. And let's go ahead and bump it over just a little bit. Cool, now what I'm gonna do is lower the opacity this a little bit, and we're gonna bring our Create a Magazine cover in Photoshop. We're just gonna bring this down just a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and push these two layers to the right. There we are, cool. Already we're looking great. So we've got a couple more layers here. We've got layer blend modes, we've got keyboard shortcuts, and we've got our type tool. Now let's go ahead and start putting them in place. This layer blend modes I want to be right about there, keyboard shortcuts there, and our type tool right about there. Now I'm not gonna try to get everything perfect with just my hands, that's what our alignment tools are for. So if I want these to be evenly spaced with each other, all I have to do is command click all three of these layers. Now we're gonna align these to the left. So we're gonna use the left alignment tool. They're all gonna be aligned to the left. And now we're going to use this tool here. If I hover over, you can see it's distribute vertical centers. So we're gonna click there and it's going to make the spacing in between each one of those layers perfect. Now, if I bring this down and do the same thing, you're gonna see it's going to bring it exactly halfway through. So let's go ahead and bring that up, bring keyboard shortcuts up right there, something like that. Shift click on the three of those and go ahead and distribute them again. Now we're gonna group all those together. So if I want all of these things to function as one, we're going to group them. So here we have our Florin logo. We're gonna group that, hold down command and click on both the text group and the Florin logo and we're going to align those to the left. And there we're gonna see, it's gonna put our layer blend modes off to the left. Now, if I wanna bring this up in size a little bit or down, I can do that as well, just by hitting Command T. And I can use my up, down, left, and right arrows to put it in place. All right, guys, we're almost done. We've just got a barcode here to finish it off. We wanted to make it look uh, super real. So we're gonna hit Shift and click and drag from one layer to another to bring our 
barcode in. There we go. All right, copy this and on a new layer, we'll just paste this in. Okay, and now we're gonna hit Command T. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, which is going to limit my rotation here. I can only do this in increments of 15 degrees. So Shift key, we're gonna bring that down, hit Enter, and right over there, this is our little, make it look like it's a real magazine. <laughs> Add a barcode, that'll make it look real. All right, guys, there we go. And that's how to style a magazine cover in Photoshop. All right, guys, now it's your turn to recreate a magazine cover. Just follow these key steps. First, you wanna bring in an image of your subject and use the gradient adjustment layer to color your subject. Now, really easy to create your gradient and change the colors. Use a blending mode screen to have it only affect the dark areas. Next, we're bringing in the title. Go ahead and put it in place and then use a layer mask to make it invisible where your subject is. If you have a tricky area like hair, use select and color range to make that area into a selection and then paint it black on your layer mask. It'll make the type look like it's behind your subject's head. After that, we showed you how to use the character and the paragraph dialogue, as well as your alignment tools to get your type into place and have everything line up perfectly. And to finish it off, we threw a barcode in there and now it looks like a real magazine cover. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I've had a great time creating this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you wanna learn more from Photoshop and Photography's number one YouTube channel, flearn.com, just hit that subscribe button on your screen right now and we'll send you free Photoshop and Photography episodes every single week. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll flirn you later. Bye, everyone. Peace. Done. Cool. All right, guys. Cool. All right, guys, so we brought our image in. All right, guys, so up until now, we brought our image. All right, cool. So the alignment tools, all right, guys, the alignment tools are nested. Um, we'll just re-record that because it didn't make any sense what I just said now. Okay. Right down below, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have other stuff, I want to throw something, but everything around me is like incredibly expensive and fragile. Except for this.